Hello world, I'm a cop. Welcome to Neo Scavenger back again part 5 where last time we came here to the sprawl of Detroit Mega City and we talked to Hatter and because we know trapping Hatter gave us a Detroit Mega City tracking bracelet so we can get inside the Detroit Mega City and also we have a couple of extra pair of binoculars so let's go sell them at the junk market. I, for some reason I didn't realize we had those when we were actually selling stuff here which is very good that we can get rid of more space because our backpack isn't in a very good condition and really neither is our, neither is our duffel bag so hopefully we can find new ones sooner than later but yeah now we're just gonna head inside Detroit Mega City uh, yeah and this we read last time because this is the exact same text but I think the next text is gonna be a different at the front of the line, the guard motions you closer. A moment of pregnant silence precedes a satisfying chirp, and the monitor flashes. Visitor pass N6MAA10816 authorized. The guard ushers you forward, and you begin down a long stretch of empty corridor lined with harsh xenon lighting. Beyond the opening at the other end, you see throngs of activity and the flicker of busy signage eclipsed by passing people. So here we are in Detroit Mega City, which like, to me, one of the weirdest things about this particular part of the game is that we can scroll this map here. There's a massive amount of map. And I've never, like, found any other locations than the ones that are here. So if there are any other locations, well, good to know. But if there aren't, why can we scroll the map? Anyways, the places we have here are the Red Gnome, which I think is, a, a, like, a restaurant. The Red Gnome is an exception in an already exceptional city. Situated on busy corner in Gate 11's Neon Alley, the single-story streamlined diner defies densely packed high-rises and elevated roads around it. In fact, several adjoining buildings seem to grow over the diner, using the precious space above its roof. It seems almost untouchable in an otherwise claustrophobic warren with glittering skyscrapers and patchwork overpasses. Even before entering, you get the sense that there is something unusual about the place. For one thing, despite a prodigious amount of tagging on every surface, the diner is left unmarred, as if those around here knew better than the tribe. However, that ominous thought doesn't seem to deter anyone's hunger. A lion snakes out from a takeout window under a sign boasting, real soul food, real meat. So, let's enter it, see what we got here. Okay, actually we're just gonna see how expensive this is. 20, 32, 24, yeah, we're not gonna buy any of this food, we just came here to check this place out. Pushing through the stainless steel door, a rush of warm, greasy air fills your nose, replacing the damp coolness from outside. Your stomach herbs almost instantly in anticipation of whatever you smell on the grill. The decor is somewhat less inviting, however. Despite a number of lights, most of them seem incapable of dispelling the dimness in the space, and sepia-stained curio along the walls seem to capture more of the creepy awkwardness of the diner's history than nostalgia. Padded stools line the long countertop, and booths run the length of the outer wall, sporting ripped vinyl, ben vinyl benches. A stark pattern of one-inch tiles dots the floor. Not surprising, in retrospect, that the takeout line was so long. Still, an open seat and a warm meal are promised land compared to eating condensed soup in the rain. You shove your stuff into an empty booth and start paging through the laminated menu. Now we're just gone. Leave the red note. On second thought, maybe you aren't so hungry. You head back into the streets. Right, and then we're gonna go the Haggerty Health Cliff, and to me, this is the most important part of uh, this city here. Haggerty Health Clinic is a pretty, pretty busy spot. Its proximity to Gate 11 and its mercenary attitude towards clientele ensures that it has steady stream business from both inside the DMC and the Sprawl. The Double H, as it's often called, offers a wide spectrum of health services. Those include diagnostics, cleaning and dressing of wounds, therapeutics, including nanorobotic suspension treatment and prescription drugs. There's also an on-site augmentation clinic where patients can elect for prosthetic enhancements. This is the thing I'm talking about. These highly desired services may require special permits in addition to the significant price tax. I don't think they require any special permits though. As you cross the street, you can't help noticing the activity on the rooftop. The high-pitched whines of turbines mark the coming and going of hover vehicles, spraying water from the landing pad in the fine mist that rains around the building. A large proportion of the vehicles appear to be unaffiliated private ambulance services. You hover your shoulders against the spray and duck under the bright lit awning. Staggered automatic doors forming a crude air choose open as you approach. Let's in go inside there. Inside, the lobby looks a lot like any other clinic. There are banks of attached seats covering most of the floor and counters for both receiving patients and dispensing pharmaceuticals. 
Dominating the right wall near hallway and elevator bank is an LED sign displaying the currently served customers. Letter and number combinations update at random intervals as nurses escort patients to and from the room. You head over to the counter and get your waiting number. It isn't long before the LED lotto calls your number and you are led away for consultation. What services do you require today? So, we can buy some painkillers, we could buy some sedatives. That's where we're sleeping goes. We could take a core body temperature regulation, we could take rehydration and micronutrient therapy, we could get a full diagnostic workup, we could clean and dressing of wounds, we can get uh, anti antibiotics, we can get broad based nanopack suspension treatment, we can get a blood transfusion, uh, or we can go upstairs. Hacker the Health offers several elective procedures which involve implanting devices and replacement tissue. Before receiving any such procedures, the patient must undergo preliminary testing for eligibility, as not all patients are good candidates for synthetic implantation or augmentation surgeries. Some procedures require additional testing, and in some cases, special permits or authorizations. You begin speaking with an attendant who reads your eligibility test results. Fortunately, initial testing seems to indicate that you are eligible for further augmentation and prosthesis. You are given a catalog of procedures currently offended, of, offered by Haggard. So, we could get... Now, if we had myopia, we could get eye surgery. We don't want to do that right now. Or we could get an artificial eye replacement for... 5,600. We're pretty sure on that. Let's, can we get this? Patient will be screened for eligibility in artificial eye replacement, including immunoreactivity. If eligible, the patient will have their na natural eyes removed and replaced with rose augmentation RA037 human eyes, which simulate perfect human visual acuity. The RA037 eyes are powered by nonlinear piezoelectric harvesters. As such, they require no additional power supply for their operational lifetime, which is expected to exceed their host. And yeah, we don't have the money, so we can't take that. Okay, so let's go downstairs. So that's basically our goal here is to get enough money to do that. Or at least that's like pretty much always my basic goal in this game. Like the story, like there's a story here as well, but ugh, who cares about the story? I just need, I, I want robotic eyes. Okay, then it's to the Detroit Savings Bank. It's a pretty small bank. Detroit Savings Bank turns out to be a surprisingly tricky business to find. It has a presence for certain. Surf service terminals are near ubiquitous, winking at passers-by from countertops, ad walls and alcoves. But there's a little more to those terminals than sign this large and a screen. There doesn't even appear to be a place to dispense cash, nor insert a card. After a bit of walking, though, you eventually find a Detroit Savings Bank micro-branch which more than a screen. You're outside the Detroit Savings Bank's Gate 11 micro-branch. A secure climate-controlled booth, slightly larger than a covered bus stop, sits on the sidewalk here. It has the requisite self-serve terminal on the exterior, but looking through the transparent wall, there appears to be an actual human teller inside! So we can leave the bank, we can wait for the teller to leave, we can threaten the teller, or we can enter the booth. Let's just enter the booth. You pull the transparent door open and step through. Inside, you're greeted with bright colored light and dry, tepid air. The teller, a presentable-looking young woman with straight brown hair, looks up from her terminal wall. Hello, she says, is there anything with which I can assist you today? So. We can take a lot of these things, but they all are like, pretend to be a mentally retarded patient, and we're not gonna do that. If like, can we use the this thing? No, like everything else is pretend to be a mentally retarded patient, and we're probably that's not something we want to do here. So we're just gonna ask about the Geig's cryo facility account. You begin explaining your situation, starting with the cryo facility, your amnesia, and the clues you follow to reach this point. She feigns interest as you tell your tale, but at the first opportunity interject. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Kindred, but do you hold an account with us? I think so, you consider answering, but she continues. Or perhaps you have some form of identification. So we have our bracelet. You hold forward your bracelet plaintively. Oh, she says, switching subtly from attentive to deflective. I'm afraid we can only service clients who presently hold an account with Detroit Savings Banks or citizens of Detroit opening new accounts. However, you're still welcome to use our payment network at any participating window. Your mobile device can both send and receive payments. She indicates a brightly illustrated placard on the wall, depicting overwhelmingly inoffensive young people conducting transactions in an unnaturally happy fashion. You smile and thank the young lady and head back outside. The humid city air seems palpable after the crisp environs of the booth. Okay, so that didn't really do anything for us. Well, let's uh, wait for the teller to leave. You find a position with a good vantage point and stare at the booth like a psycho for a while. Fortunately, it appears something has come up and it doesn't involve calling the police on a stalker. The teller gathers some things, exits the booth and locks it behind her. 
You're outside the DSB gate, Elon Macrobench. Now empty and lock. Okay, wait for the teller to return and lock in. Several minutes later, the teller walks back up to the booth and unlocks the door. She spreads a few personal effects on her desk and draws the keyboard near. So watch the teller. Watch the teller log in with an optical zoom. When the login screen appears, the teller rattles off some keystrokes and is almost too quick to discern. However, you think you have it down to a couple possible permutations. It should be few enough to try manually without a lockout. Now, to get your mitts on that keyboard. Uh, okay, so we can't go there inside again. And I think if we threaten the teller, we're just gonna have a bad time happen to us. So, let's just uh, leave for now. And let's go check out the Concrete Forest Apartments. Arriving at Concrete Forest Apartments, you immediately see the resemblance. Towering structures stand at regular intervals like giant artificial trees. Crisscrossing laundry lines, string lights, and contracode balcony modifications complete the illusion. Below, the ground is an organic patchwork of community gardens and trash heaps, gutted husks of cars and playgrounds, those who call the forest home and those who sleep in its shadow. It feels a bit like a street fair collided with a re refuge camp in the ghetto. You step in the block and start looking around. There is a canteen truck stretched to the curbside near the main walk. People are lined up at the illuminated side window, and a mixture of steam and smoke stream from its openings. Nearby, music booms from where a crowd has gathered. It's all bobbing shoulders and legs from here, but you do see a car's hatchback sticking up from near the center. One of the towers is a sea store at the ground level. A lonely few are inside, but doesn't seem very popular. And there's the ubiquitous snuck of vendor barking at best passers-by. So, we can check out the canteen truck. Uh, value 48. What? Okay, if we check out the canteen truck. As you get closer, you smell fried food. You catch an unfamiliar savory scent. Spicy, but also a bit sweet. And a bit artificial. No menu, though. Folks here must be regulars. Just line up a few words, then bay and go. Dude in the truck probably makes a tidy profit at the rate he's going. So, let's get in line. Whatever's cooking, you want some in your stomach. You find the end of the line and take your place. It moves at a pretty pretty good clip, and you, as you reach the middle, you try to sneak a peek at what's up there. Looks like combos of fried sprouts, spiced meat shavings, cabbage, and fried tofu sticks. As you reach the counter, you notice the shaved meat comes from a vertical rotisserie of molded meat. However, there's also a real animal of sort roasting back there. You what you want? Truck guys already look impatient. You what you want. You you what you want. You what you want? Yeah. Uh, shaved meat and sprouts, fried tofu, cabbage and roast. Ask about the roast. Ask about the roast. You nod at the back wall. What's with the roast? Track rabbit, he says before you finish. Then sensing your confusion. Catch of the day. In enunciated syllables. Catch of the day. So much for licensed food providers, it seems. Uh... Let's just eat some fried tofu six since we've been standing here in line and we're well we're slightly thirsty. Maybe this will end with our thirst. Fingers! He shouts at the back. His assistant lifts a basket of thick golden brown sticks and shakes out a portion. The sticks are drizzled in dark juice, probably soy, and you exchange your money for the grub. Yeah, we did get our thirst up there. A crispy, salty sour shell gives way to a softer, more flavor neutral center. It's a pleasant sensation, the initial flavor and crunch. However, the plate is gone almost too soon, and you're left feeling about as satisfied as if you've eaten the equivalent volume of cheese puffs. At least this was healthier. Okay, uh... Right, uh, let's check out the sea store. In major towers like this, you'll often find a convenience store on ground level, like what one would find at a gas station. It's filled with things that works in an emergency, but nothing for which you dedicate a visit. The cramped space is filled with bottled drinks, junk foods, over-the-counter drugs, and impulse buys. Let's start shopping! So, we could pick up items to purchase them. You cannot sell items here, however. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, do oh, we have a full bottle of whiskey. I was thinking we might take some whiskey with us, but since we have... What we're gonna... What we are actually are gonna take is a bunch of batteries, because they're really cheap. And we're actually going to take two because uh, we can fit more in here than what we already got. So let's just remove this one and put this in here. Uh, you already have batteries, yeah. Just to have as much batteries as possible. And that's all we needed from here. So let's just go. Okay, and then we'll check out the crowd. 
The sidewalk is vibrating with bass as you approach, and the scene begins to make a bit more sense. A wide body metallic red hatchback is parked near the center. The doors and hatch wide open to expose an array of lights, speakers and subs. You can almost feel the air move in time with the beat. Meanwhile, b-boys are taking turns, mixing moves and styles both familiar and strange. It astounds you how the human body can do these things, how humans still push the boundaries of an art from older than you can imagine. The high, positive energy feels so foreign after days in the wild. Everything out there seems to be forgotten in this hot bath of sound and energy. You stick around a few moments more, soaking up raw culture, then turn back to matters at hand. Okay, so there's nothing here. So, the only thing for us to do here, right now, is to go in here and threaten the teller. Which I think is gonna lead into a police chase and us getting banished from the city and losing our wrist thing. So that's the kind of thing. Do we wanna do that? But I didn't think that's the only option we have, because got like the reason I wouldn't wanna do it is because if we get banished from this city, we can't get back to the health clinic and get our eye implants, but we don't really have the money for the eye implants anyway, so... Uh, yeah, let's let's just move the story forward, let's threaten the teller. Screw delicacy, let's get this done! You step in the booth and stride towards the teller purposefully. She's visibly surprised at your braceness and stammers. Hello, sir. Can I help you? You march around the desk and tell her to get lost, staring at her as she scrambles to get away from you. She steps outside and hurries away, rummaging through her purse. You got access to your computer now, but not much time. The threatening of a bank employer is sure to be high on the police priority list. Search the terminal. You find a query tool and locate the account ID field. Recalling the ID from the cryo computer, you key in the digits and hit enter. You hazard a look outside and bystanders have started rubbernecking. On screen, a turning hourglass seems to mock you as if the faint sound of sirens echoing off skyscrapers grows louder. Like, we gotta wait for the search results, otherwise this was completely useless. Search results finally appear and you click on the loan entry. Better banking checking account. 1117. McAllen, Kale. Concrete first apartments number 3935, Tower 48, 23140, Halsted Road, Detroit, G1109-01. Balance 0, 0.00. Huh. Well, that probably explains why your cryo visit came to such an abrupt stop. Sirens blare suddenly in the streets. In a high wobbling burst, blue and red strobes, strobes light up the area as fan jets scatter moisture and debris around. A loudspeaker booms across nearby building facades. This is Skycore security. Step into the street and place your hands on top of your head. Busted! So we can comply or we can run away! We're gonna run away. <laughs> I mean, at least it gives us some options. Complying just means that we're just, you know, we're gonna be thrown into jail or thrown out of the city. Run away! You steal your nerves and bolt, veering left immediately. A flash of red emits from the skybike's undercarriage and your body is painted in a flickering crosshatch pattern. You hear a beep followed by a loud POW! Something slams into you and you stagger a few steps as muscles clench near the impact. Oh no. Player's armor was barely affected. Instead of collapsing though, you emit a long tearing scream and resume barreling ahead. What bystanders had accumulated suddenly flip out and start running in a panic as you're full tilt in Hulk mode across the street. The sky bike winds up and starts pursuit. Dodging down a side street, you hear the engines whirring behind you enter a steady crescendo. It was an impressive feat, but this choice is going to be over pretty quickly if the thing tags you again. So, we can merge with a crowd, we can duck into a building, we can other, use other ground and hover traffic air as cover, we can duck into an alley. Uh, so, we don't know the buildings around here, so ducking into a building is not a good idea. The Crowd was already fleeing, so I feel like merging with the crowd is not also a good idea. And other ground and hover traffic this cover is probably not gonna work. So let's duck into an alley. You duck into an alley. It's dark with high walls too narrow for the bike to follow effectively. Good, good, good. The bike slows down instead of gaining altitude to vault the buildings and get overhead. Oh. No place to hide in there here though. Not much cover either. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Oh. You manage to buy yourself a few more moments, but that thing's far from shaking off. In fact, it seems to have an unshakable beat on you, no matter what you do, even tracking you through obstacles, okay? The Skycore bike continues its vigil, targeting turret twitching for the right shot. Uh, so, we had a couple of minutes, so let's check for tracking devices. That thing's gotta be tracking you somehow. Check your things to see if something's giving your position away. Well, I got a pretty good idea what's giving my position away. 
Do we wanna dump this? Oh man, do we wanna dump this? We can't get back in here if we dump this. Uh, unable to run. Oh, you know what? Let's dump this. The Skycrow bike continues to be chill. Sign and start twitching for the right. Okay, we checked our for tracking devices. Let's uh, let's duck into a building now. Scanning for doorways. There's at least one greasy spoon you could see entering with no fuss. Maybe they have a back door. You dash inside, pushing past a line of annoyed patrons, then then to a set of interior glass doors. You press through and end in a mall-like corridor, lined with stores and doors emptying onto either side of the block, quickly gauging which way the sky bike which way the sky bike will guess you choose the opposite. Right. You manage to buy yourself a few more minutes, but that thing's far from shaking off. In fact, it seems to have an unshakable beat on you, no matter what you do, even tracking you through obstacles. But what? How? How is it tracking me through obstacles? I... Do we need to destroy this? It's like, this has gotta be the thing that it's using to track me with. She yeah, this, this hurts. It's 3,000, but let's do it. Right, uh... Let's merge with the crowd now, because we were in a different spot. People on the sidewalk here are thick enough that you could probably make yourself a risky target if you weave through them. Dashing towards the sidewalk, you begin bobbing and weaving through the skybike's flickering red target hash mark to follow you. You do your best to present as few, as few clear shots as possible, shoulder brushing one person, sidestepping the next. POW! Something slams into your body, this time dropping like a sack of potatoes to the sidewalk. Your body twitches and convulses from the shock ground embedded in your skin, and everything smears into a wash of sound and light. Moments later, an armored multi wheel personal carry appears, bearing the same colors and flashing lights as the Skycore bike. Bulky silhouettes emerge from the APC's glaring lights, and their shades defined by heavy riot gear. They approach you, bind your hands, and half escort, half carry you up a ramp into the APC's holding area. All the while, the red beam from the Skycross bike traces your moves, only shutting off as you pass through the APC's bulkhead. Inside, you're stripped of anything useful and strapped into a restraining seat. The guards then step through another bulkhead and climb a step or two before sealing you in. You're left there, sitting in your restraints, looking around a reinforced room with no windows. The sound of duck fans can be heard, but little else. Nothing seems to happen for an annoyingly long time, and then the APC begins moving. The acceleration is surprisingly subtle for such a big machine though the ride is still pretty rough back there. When your ride comes to an end, the interior bulkhead opens again and the guards emerge to unfasten you. You're led to an exterior doorway which blinds you when opened. The sounds of the city spill in through the door along with damp exterior air. You're guided down a ramp and just as your eyes begin to adjust, you're dropped into a seat. Inside, under pale lighting, you're made to wait in restraints for hours. Drop cubicles divide most of the floor, and stern leaking operatives variously interview detainees, check computers, and disappear into other cubicles. Your eyes mine every detail of the room, looking for anything interesting to settle on. White foam ceiling tiles, beige filing cabinets, black inbox, outbox trays, pine desk tops. It's so sterile that it actually incites frustration. Helpfully, informational posters and propaganda seem to be hung on display to add a splash of color. DMC Perimeter Service, We Care, and Contraband, It Hurts All of Us. The missing person's touchscreen was good for about an hour, but you memorized all the faces by now. By the time your case handler arrives, you've counted the ceiling tiles to group them into shades of beige and create an elaborate conspiracy linking all the missing persons. Your handler leads you to his cubicle and you're subjected to a battery of tests, including face scan, retinal scan, DNA sampling, fingerprinting and blood sample. The interview is something of a comedy with questions like what is your full name, address and date of birth? And when asked where you obtained the forged pass, your answer received less than enthusiastically. You're escorted from the interview area and brought into an on-site clinic where you're strapped to a table and anesthetized. When you wake, you are on a bench in a painted cinder block room, leaning against a corner. Both your head and right shoulder ache. A piercing bleed fills the room as an intercom comes to life. You have been charged as follows. First degree, criminal trespassing, unauthorized access to a computer with intent to commit office, fraud and misuse of visas, conspiracy to defraud the city of Detroit, consorting with a known felon, failure to disclose personal information. 
the voice continues. You are hereby discharged from DMC Gate 11, marked and exiled for a period of one year. Failure to comply with this sentence is cause for appended term of exile, not to exceed two years per infraction. A door on the opposite wall buzzes and swings open, blinding you temporarily with the light from outside. When your eyes finally adjust, you see the cold, muddy streets outside the DMC walls and the huddling throng of sprawling inhabitants going about their business. So, that's it for the story part here, really. I don't think there's anything we can do with that, like, anymore. Let's go see if the Hatter has something to tell us. If there's been, like, a long enough time since we were here last, so let's use this. You cross the muddy street towards the old flop house. See if the Hatter's available. Hatter's guards inform you that Hatter's on important business right now and won't be back until tomorrow. Okay. What is the time? The time is 6.41. Oh, it's still... <laughs> so we did all of that. All that we did in the city. Like, in a very short time. So, uh, what we're gonna do now, I think, is we're gonna... Head out. For, like, a little while. Uh, let's... Why is all of this like this? Anyways. I want water to be on this edge, like so, and uh, actually, yeah, that's that's good, because this is unchecked water. This is sterilized water, this is unchecked water. Oh, we get more here, right? Ah, uh, yeah, let's actually put them in here, too. Okay. Yeah, let's try to find like some stuff. Oh, uh, let's talk to these guys. Offer to talk. Just keep your nose clean, and we got no trouble. He says through his face mask. Yeah, we're just gonna try to find something to loot, and uh, then once we found something to loot, we'll come back. I mean, we should have probably counted how many hexes it was from uh, where it says you can't loot anymore like looting's bad compared to now you can actually loot because these places yeah there's there really like no loot here well there was some loot and this is a locked storage cabinet so there might be actual loot in here oh another locked storage cabinet nice Ooh, first aid kit stuff in it uh, let's empty it out we'll take that and where's our there's our amixocillin put that in there oh not not what i was looking for this was what i was looking for uh, i don't think we actually need the shards anymore uh the top's worth some money so we'll take it uh this is worth some money so we'll take it three i don't know it's, it's three dollars enough that we'll take it Oh, this got a value of dollar. Interesting. <laughs> but thinking about the fact that, yeah, we're gonna need, like, if we wanna go back to Detroit, we're gonna need another 3,000 so we can buy the, the, that, uh, thing. What is it? The, uh, player's armor was barely affected, huh? The pass. Yeah, if we wanna buy the pass, it's gonna cost us 3,000. Oh, why did I? Oh, we have the box card. Because I was thinking that we only have uh, four moves, so I pressed start there to get rid of those. Uh, well, to get to the next turn, because I was expecting us to have four moves only, but no, we have five moves there for a little while. Oh, <laughs> now I only <laughs> spent three. Okay, I think this is far enough that we can actually scavenge here for some proper loot because we really want to find another backpack that's the thing we want to find the most oh, well there's a higher poopy backpack that's not really what we're looking for another higher poopy uh, oh oh and a duffel bag nice can we put the duffel bag in our hand yes we can okay because this duffel bag is like the condition isn't very good so uh, but we're not going to. Oh, 
to empty it out, but to do it like this. Yeah, we're not going to just leave that behind. We're going to use this one that we have until the like end. Oh, water is pretty easy to sell, so let's gather empty bottles. There's some painkillers. Uh, do we have a Painkillers. Oh, I think our painkillers are here, right? Are these painkillers? What do we got in here? Empty out. We got some amoxicillin there. Uh, can I put the amoxicillin in here? Yes, we can. Synthetic thyroid hormone. Okay, I thought it was something else. Oh, the, here we got painkillers. Right. We're... Did I just find pain? Oh, was I thinking about putting? This is how my memory works, really. Like I already forgot why I was look checking out the painkiller thing. Uh, this is in pretty good condition. So, oh, we can p we can put this inside them, right? Uh, which is actually quite interesting. Because as you can see, the higher poopy takes less space than the box. So we could put the box full of stuff, put that in the... Well, actually it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all. Okay, now, so this stuff here, it's just not really useful. Well, the duffel bag was good for us, so let's check out this. Okay, offer to talk. Mashigana. What? Was that even English? Mashugana, Mashugana, Mashugana. I ain't talking to you. Go. Away. Uh, okay. Leave him alone. Right. Let's check this last storage shed. Oh, we found something. Uh, that's worth some money. We'll take that. Oh, those are worth some money. We'll take those. And uh, then we're gonna go here. Oh, we're tired already. So we're gonna. I think we're gonna check this. We're gonna check those places. And then we're gonna head back to Detroit. Uh, Detroit. Or actually, let's see. What's the time? What's the time? What's the time? It's, yeah, it might be a good time to start heading back and just sell some of our stuff that we picked up. We're gonna fill up some bottles with water and sell that as well. But that's gonna happen in the next episode because we're gonna end at this one here. I'm Uncle Cop, this is me, Neo Scavenger, back again. Goodbye world, thanks for watching. See you next time.